common modalités de gouvernance. Uh, since the, the Belém World Social Forum was assisted at the emergence of new, all kind of initiatives um, on the common style that, you know, and, I mean, uh, in Belém, uh, I'm, I'm trying really to translate from Spanish now. <laughs> in Belém, there was uh, a big, a big orientation for the World Social Forum in the World Social History. But maybe you know that already. I, I, I told that yesterday and several times. My interest is in the emergence of these new movements and the new movement of the commons. If it's a, maybe it's, a, it's not a movement. But uh, the commons plus uh, <coughs> degrowth plus uh, social economy plus solidarity, uh, solidar economy, etc. It's a new phenomenon, etc. The title of the document we're trying to do is the commons enter politics. <coughs> uh, starting with your own experience, what, how do you see that the entrance of the commons into politics? Well, I'm not sure the commons are a movement. There's certainly a, a, re, a renewed paradigm that is very, very useful to unite and to aggregate uh, many of the different movements that today are uh, emerging. Um, since, I would say, Seattle in 1999 and the alter globalist movement emergence, the issue of the financial system and the economic system being central uh, to our political struggles has been um, a, a growing uh, conscientious uh, sort of uh, movement that has brought together uh, the ecologists, uh, environmentalists on uh, one side, uh, all the NGO and development movement on the other side, um, the, 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 the movements for uh, different rights uh, of, of uh, women and, and, and other uh, genders and, and I mean this has all been growing up from uh, what before were very separate compartmental kind of movements each one working on their own domain on their own sector today I think what, what is really has really emerged and the World Social Forum has helped it um, is uh, this idea that we're all united in the same fight and that the fight is against the uh, privatization of everything uh, by the, the big financial powers which by the way each one has a name so um, it's not just a, a imaginary system and uh, what has happened is that also the, 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 the public spaces, the state, has been occupied by the, the for-profit market uh, powers. And this has gradually reduced the spaces for community, for uh, the, 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 the appropriation of uh, the, the livelihood spaces for everyone. And it's, it's now something that is not just perceived by a small minority of intellectuals or of uh, anarchists or, 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 or little ideological groups. It's something that is really, um, I think, widespread and, and felt by a large part of the population. And that's where the commons come in, I think. That's where uh, re, uh, realizing that uh, first of all, our, our environment, the nature, uh, the sky, the air, the water, the land, these are not things that are the property of someone. These are uh, everyone's property and they have their own rights as well as our uh, indigenous friends from many nations have uh, insisted and told us from long mil millennia of tradition. So, um, we're rediscovering, in a sense, what this means, and we're giving it a name, but not just a name, we're giving it a sense. Um, and that's 
this sense can become a political sense in the, in, in the way that it can be um, uh, the unity for a struggle to regain access and control as people uh, to what is, has always been uh, of everyone. But in your own experience in Italy, you have all kind of uh, initiatives coming in at different levels. Could be a local, could be uh, municipal, could be national with the, the water for ex referendum, for example. Um, how do you see the articulation of all this? Or maybe you can first give examples of what's going on uh, in Italy and what do you find <coughs> interesting in, in what's going on in Italy? And how all this could articulate, you know, in a, maybe a movement or maybe something different? Well, in Italy, in the last, I would say, six, seven years, uh, we've had a lot of uh, very, very uh, live and, and creative initiatives um, that were not under the banner of the commons necessarily, but that's what they were actually doing. And I think, actually, the, 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 I, I prefer using the word commoning, which we don't have in Italian, um, than the commons in itself, because I see commoning as a, an active process, uh, as we were saying before, of, of regaining control. So, and, 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 and reclaiming uh, spaces, not just physical spaces, but also knowledge spaces, memory spaces, um, and, and, and a lot in the digital world as well. So the referendum to republicize the water systems, uh, the management of water in Italy, water like the, the, the essence of life, uh, has been extremely important for the um, creation of a movement in Italy that went beyond any ideological or political uh, uh, arena. So it was really transversal. Um, and it also involved a lot of the youth, of the new generations, uh, that finally had something that could, could appeal to them and could speak to them directly. Um, so this referendum was a huge effort and had most of the political system against it, even the progressive uh, part of the political system. They only joined at the very, very end when they saw that there was actually a mass movement that was being created. Um, and, and this sort of, this victory was an incredible boost for all the social movements um, who joined it, as with the climate uh, movement later, uh, another commons if you want. But water really uh, was so simple a message that Water is some, something you cannot uh, privatize. It's something that is, is really for everyone and, and should be available for everyone. You should not pay, uh, and, and, and certainly you should not manage it in a privatistic way, uh, gaining profit or extracting profit from it. Um, so that really um, helped boost what then happened after, which, which was in the domain of public spaces, urban spaces. So the connection maybe is not direct as I'm putting it, but actually in, in, in the culture, uh, I think it was. Um, the equivalence of something which, is, uh, which should be reclaimed as everyone's. And, and there are a lot of public spaces today that are abandoned, that are uh, not usable by the community who lives in it. Um, and so, a very creative process started from the people living in, in, in the neighborhood um, to do a public garden, uh, community garden effort, to uh, just uh, create from a, a, a very abandoned uh, periphery of, of a city a place that was livable and, and, and not depressing, um, to allow children and young people to, to have a space to play and, and, and to interact uh, instead of the uh, mall uh, or, 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 or the commercial center that's 
has substituted one of the basic elements of Italian culture, which is la piazza, the, the square where you meet, and, and the bar and where, where you hang out. Um, so all of this has to be re, re, redesigned, recreated, reno, renovated. And that's where the commons actually uh, came in. But can you do it only uh, as a civic initiative? Um, yes and no. We had some excellent examples um, in Rome. Uh, one of the oldest theaters, Teatro Valle, uh, was uh, in, in, in failure. Uh, and uh, the, uh, it, it wasn't subsidized anymore by the, by the government. So uh, the, the, um, the actors the, uh, the, and, and, and the workers in the theater occupied it and made a charter of, of the commons of culture uh, to manage this theater as an open space for the city, for the people and for the artists. And it, it was amazing how, how many initiatives they made how many uh, really spaces they opened for young people who, who had no possibility of expressing themselves and learning from uh, actors who had a real experience, etc. But this thing only lasted a few years because there was no um, common culture with the, with the government, with the political level. And uh, that's, that's why uh, there's, there, there's been a, a, a huge need of creating this link so that uh, not to subsidize or to, to, to uh, pay for finance these public spaces, but to allow the creativity and the, 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 the uh, emergence of, of just um, some, some spontaneous action by the people. Uh, and this started in, in one of the historic cities of cooperation and, and, and of uh, progressive culture, which, was, which is Bologna. Uh, and, and there, the uh, public administration, the local administration, um, actually decided to, to, to make a framework uh, with a regulation that would allow people to spontaneously propose their ideas, uh, to, to, to be able to reclaim spaces, places, parts of the city and, and to use them um, creatively, to even to change them um, without having to go through a whole bureaucratic process. This has been about a two year, two, three year uh, process and the first of these charters or regulations came out in 2014. After that, it was just like a viral effect and almost a hundred cities uh, today, as of today, have this regulation. Each one adapted it uh, in, for, for their own context, and another hundred cities are uh, in the process of doing it. Most of them involving the groups and people who have either occupied a space or are already in some way, some way informally um, taking care uh, of, 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 of a place um, in designing this, uh, these, these charters. So each one is, is a bit different. And uh, the nice thing is that they're looking at each other and trying to copy what is useful, um, reproposing and changing what, what is not. And, and this experimentation is, 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 is very rich and, and productive. In Bologna, after two years, there are about 220 projects that have been uh, actually approved by the people themselves to be able to, to, to manage. And, and in other even very small towns, um, they just uh, change the idea of the relationship between the government and the people. Now it's a collaboration that is taking place. Mm -hmm. So the interesting thing is that these charters are called, if I remember, charters of urban commons. The, the commons is term is in the title of the of the <coughs> of the charters all, all the time or? not all the time okay. sometimes it's uh, civic collaboration sometimes uh, for urban spaces uh, public spaces but commons is mainly it's always in the text somewhere so it's 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 getting it's common goods is what we use in Italy beni comuni we don't still we don't have a, a, like an English word or a verb for commoning but I think that will come out 
um, because it's extremely necessary. And one thing I would like to point out is that thanks to this, we are in effect um, uh, sort of uh, finding an antidote to the whole privatization uh, uh, and, and alienation of, of public uh, goods and, 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 and spaces that has been going through the 90s until today. The uh, city of Florence, my city, um, and the region of Tuscany in which Florence is, has a list of historical public buildings that they're selling out. And they're going to fairs uh, around uh, the world to try to sell these public goods before even offering them to the people. One good thing about this is that they finally map them so we know which they are and we can start to reclaim them. So if we have a project, an idea, uh, we can say, hey, we come first. Um, and then only if there's really no other possibility, uh, maybe you can alienate it, but first, the people. Mm -hmm. I would like now that um, you to speak about, <coughs> about the repas you're involved in and what does that mean, not only in Italy, but in Europe or internationally as well. Okay, REPES stands for Intercontinental Network for the Promotion of Social Solidarity Economy. Social Solidarity Economy is one of those movements we were talking about before, um, dealing with how to transform the economy back into something that is uh, useful, owned and controlled by uh, the community, by society. And it, so it's not a reformist idea. Um, it starts from practical initiatives of people getting together and finding solutions for their needs. That is in all domains, um, from food production to uh, clothes to services, um, energy, etc. And, and this is also a very rapidly growing uh, movement. Um, it's not starting from scratch. In many countries, there's been uh, years and years, if not centuries, of history of cooperation, collaboration, mutual forms uh, in which people find find the way to, to, to do a different economy. But today, the idea of networking all these together is what is really making the difference. So you will have the consumers and producers working together um, finding uh, different ways of distributing uh, according to their needs, of planning together, of, of uh, deciding what needs to be produced, how it has to be produced. You have uh, energy cooperatives which are owned by the consumers, so you are a producer and consumer at the same time of, uh, of the renewable energy you need. Um, locally produced and networked, gridded together, so what you produce in excess is shared uh, around and this concept in a sense is is the fundamental uh, concept the, the idea is that we want a democratic economic system which is not only internally democratic as cooperatives are but it's generally democratic and that means that the society is the is is who benefits from it we want a, not a, an economy for profit but for benefit and, and we want that that benefit is not for only a few people, uh, the 1%, but for everybody. So in, in this conception, the issue of how do we actually do it, how do we govern, how do we share responsibilities is, is crucial. Uh, and it's a very practical issue. And I think this is where the connection with the commons is very close. Because how do you manage the commons? Who is in charge? Who's responsible? Um, who makes the decisions and uh, who is ultimately the uh, sort of the, the, the caretaker of, of the whole system. If it's a public building owned formally by the state and there's a group of neighbors, citizens, residents who are uh, re re making it a, a live place and, 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 and uh, taking care of it, etc. Um, if someone gets hurt or if something is done wrong, who's responsible? Um, how do we take decisions on what should be done? 
uh, that's that's something we're struggling in the solidarity economy movement and we're creating very successful also examples uh, as we go on and I think that's how we could link closely the commons um, with with uh, this, this uh, that's new also movement. also some of these experience experiences show that it's not that easy actually if we take for example the experience of ABC in Naples <coughs> where I think the, there was real problems at the end for uh, a real civic or citizen management for, for the ABC. Uh, all these initiatives uh, at the moment, uh, this uh, social economy and peer-to-peer, -peer, um, um, open cooperativism, <coughs> degrowth, etc. Some, some of them claim to be um, Example experiences for a post-capitalist transition. Um, so we, we've been talking about this a little bit in the last few days. I would like you to speak about that a bit. Uh, how do you define that? Or well, do you agree on that? There, there are two elements here, post-capitalist and transition. Okay, so we cannot think of just abstracting ourselves from the uh, capitalist market that exists and in which we're immersed, so we have to deal with that. But at the same time, we can start moving out of it create, as we create our alternative economic social systems. And the two things are very closely connected. Um, so if we take money out of a commercial bank and we invest and create mutual forms of credit um, that are owned by the people who put the money in and by the people as well who get loans from it um, and the decisions are, are shared, etc., etc., we're taking, um, even if it looks like small portions, but we're gradually taking a lot of money out of that system and power, de facto. Um, and that's uh, good for the financial system, but also in the production system. Today, thanks to the new technologies, we can reproduce what uh, until just a few years ago you had to have a big production chain, globalized chain to do. We can now make it in micro factories um, uh, on demand and where demand means on the needs that we really have and we can redesign because it's open. Um, so this, is, this will really, really change uh, a lot and will subtract a lot from the, the, the capitalist system. But it's there. So we have to take that into account and the political system is, is designed around it. So we also have to change our relation to the political system and collaborations with the, those public political systems that are closer to us, the public authorities uh, for cities and, and and for regions is the first, the first way to do it. The next thing is transition. It took about, what, 40, 50 years to create this global capitalized system. Um, perhaps it will take a little less, but I think that's sort of the, the time range we have to look at to, to change substantially a lot of the, of the systems. I don't think it will uh, evaporate at a certain sense the capacity of resilience and of recre and, and of cooperation that uh, the capitalist system has demonstrated is is humongous and the power that it holds is also very big. But at the same time, I think um, the accumulation that has uh, been going on is, is now so striking, so big that. Um, it, it cannot be supported any longer. It's not sustainable in itself any longer. Um, so whereas there's forms of green economy or corporate social responsibility that are sort, sort of trying to make capitalism look a little nicer, um, that won't hold if we are able to create a real movement um, that is unified in the principles and the vision, but very plural in the different ways of doing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a last question, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, no. Just the last question is because uh, we we're here in the 
what social forum? How do you think? Uh, how do you think? Uh, what kind of role could have the World Social Forum is the, in this new uh, context, global context, with all this emergence of this new thing? I think that the World Social Forum is really, really, really needed in its model of bringing together, as it has done since the beginning, very different forms of, 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 uh, and pieces of society. Um, and, 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 and getting them to strategize together and to realize together that they're actually working on the same issues. Uh, the problem is that it cannot continue in the same format. Um, we cannot continue with an international jet set of few people from uh, rich NGOs or even not rich NGOs but that put some effort in it to meet every once in a while in some remote place in the world. We have to really increase the um, multiplication of the model of the social forum um, in the little village, the, the region, uh, and occasionally at the, at the national and, 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 and larger international uh, levels, but also using a lot more the new technologies we have at, at our disposal. So um, that's where we have to be much more creative and think of the World Social Forum as a commons that everybody has to take care of and not just of something that a group of organizers every two or three years uh, does with a big effort. Chico, we take care with one of the founder, uh, already said that the World Social Forum is a commons uh, a couple of years ago, but we'll see. Thank <laughs> you.